Steele Johnson. Man, we're so honored to have you, bud. Thanks for, thanks for coming our way. And I know that as a college student, you're missing class today at Purdue. So thank you very much for inviting me out here yeah. to get out of two days of class. <laughs> Uh, we've gotten to know each other a little bit in the last 24 hours. He actually spent some time with our swim and dive team. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. And I uh, do want to recognize that they are there in the president's box. Can we welcome them, everybody? It's so great to have them. Also, Coach Jake and Coach Tori, such an honor to have you here with us as well. Let's, let's just go back to the beginning. Uh, tell us your story. Share a little bit of your testimony. More than just being a, a great Olympic athlete, you, you're a, a, a common brother in Christ. Right. And we yeah. want to hear what God's been doing in your life and uh, share your testimony with us. Yeah, so um, I guess with this being Liberty, um, I feel like I had a, a similar upbringing to maybe a lot of people here. I grew up in the church, um, grew up going to church, grew up in the middle of nowhere in Indiana, um, but grew up going to church, Indiana people? <laughs> Wow, that's more than I thought. Um, but grew up going to church. I was a member of the worship team in high school and was a youth leader in high school. And I was just kind of like one of those people that hung around the church. I was homeschooled because I dove eight hours a day. Wow, that's a lot more homeschool people than I thought. Um, but I dove eight hours a day, so I didn't have time to go to normal school. Um, so I would spend my whole day training, and then I would spend my evenings doing a little bit of homework, but mostly just hanging around the church, because that's where my friends were. That's where people who were into film or into music hung out, and that's a place I could hang out with them. And so, um, as I said, I was training eight hours a day. When I was eight years old, I started diving. Um, and we learned really quickly at the age of eight um, that diving was going to be something I could do in the foreseeable future. Um, within two years of starting my diving career, I guess, as an eight-year-old, um, I was asked to join the national team, which was based in Indianapolis. So it was just an hour away from where I lived, and it made it a reality for me as a 10-year-old to dive with eight other athletes who seven of those eight made the Olympic team in 2008. So I was brought up by an incredible group of athletes and the diver that I won the Olympic silver medal with, uh, David Badaya, he actually drove me to and from practice from the age of 10 before he went off to college. Um, so I've actually known him for a really, really long time. And he would drive me to practice, he went off to college, and then I ended up going to the same school as him, and we ended up diving together and being paired together for the Olympics, um, which is something I never really thought would happen, but I'm really glad it did because not only did he work with me to become an Olympian, a dream I really, really wanted to achieve, he also was the person that took me under his wing and taught me the gospel. So I grew up in church. I grew up around it. I know the stories. I knew of Jesus, but I didn't really know Jesus until I was probably like 18 years old. It was January of 2015 when David sat down with me to coffee and he was like, okay, we've known each other forever, but like, I haven't heard your testimony. What's your testimony? And I was like, oh, I was baptized when I was eight. And he's like, great, but what's your testimony? And I was kind of rocked because I didn't know what a testimony was. And I realized in that moment, I didn't really have a personal relationship with Jesus. I was going to church. I was doing all the right things. I was um, trying to be a good person because I thought that's what would get me to heaven. And then David kind of showed me what the gospel truly was. And him and my coach both worked with me to take me through the gospel and show me the reality of Jesus and why Jesus has already declared identity over us and how this Olympic dream would not be able to define me because I dove and I love diving, but diving was me and I was diving. If I would fail in a meet or not do well, I would be crushed, I would be depressed, I would be sad because that's all I knew. I didn't know that whether I win an Olympic medal or never make an Olympic team, that I'm loved, I'm a child of God, and that he's pleased with me. I didn't realize that. And now, leading into the Olympics in 2016, David and Adam really showed me that, along with my wife, who I met in January of 2016. She came alongside me and really loved me well and showed me the Holy Spirit as well and how to be a spirit-filled person. So it was, it was kind of a, an interesting upbringing, very normal, very typical, but when I truly encountered Jesus in 2015, that's when my life started to change. Life didn't get easier. In some ways, life got way harder. But the thing was that Jesus wasn't going to change. You know, diving was going to change. Some days I would do great. Some days I would do bad. People around me would change. Some days I'd be with people who loved me well, and some days I wouldn't be. But Jesus is going to love me perfectly no matter what. And I realized that, and I had to cling to that through a pretty dark season through the year of 2015. And that's really what got me through. 
Steele, you talked about how you would train eight hours a day yeah. as an eight-year-old, and there was about seven or eight of you that were just kind of a part of this training team. Yeah. That sounds just brutally intense, but yeah. uh, why, if, if that's happening at that level, why is it that uh, nations like China have such an advantage over the United Nation, I mean, the, over like the United States or Canada or Great Britain right. when it comes to um, owning that particular sport? Yeah, so China right now is like the dominant nation in diving. We got the silver medal and China won gold. David and I dove incredibly well and China dove normal. China's just an absolute beast when it comes to diving. It's because they start training even longer than eight hours a day from an even younger age. I was eight years old. They're like four, five, six years old and they do it full time, six, seven days a week. And they're just so detail oriented in their training, which really is needed once you get to age 16, 17, and 18. So they, they literally take a four year old child and, and wow. How does that how does that work? <laughs> I honestly don't even know. They like we were in Guangzhou this year actually, um, and we were doing a training camp there before we went to Wuhan, China for the World Cup. And we got there, and there's like 300 little kids running around this training facility, all varying from age to like probably four to like 16 and 17, just like clockwork, doing their dives all day long and doing them so well. And tons of coaches around, so it's like a machine there. They just get the kids started young and they teach them how to be good at a young age so they don't lose it when they get older. Wow. When you, when you were um, 12 years old, you had a pretty traumatic moment in your life that could have derailed this entire career for you, right. but instead God has used it to take tragedy and really make it testimony. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So when I was 12 years old, I was in a normal training session um, and I started doing 10 meter, which is the top board at a super young age. Not a smart idea to be doing it super young because a lot can go wrong pretty quickly. And I was doing a dive I shouldn't have been doing and it was a reverse three and a half tuck. Did the dive, was too close to the tower and I actually hit my head on the 10 meter platform and fell 33 feet onto my head, onto the water and it ripped my scalp in half. Um, the, hitting, the, hitting the board didn't necessarily do the biggest damage, no. right? Hitting the water. Yeah, because when you're falling 33 feet, you're going like 35 miles an hour. And I hit my head, I probably grazed it on the tower, created a little cut, but then you fall 35, 33 feet, 35 miles an hour, and that can just rip it open. We, uh, <laughs> we don't have footage of it, but you were recently, you were recently in, in a movie as an actor, yeah. and uh, it was weird that uh, you, you actually played uh, a, an athlete who, as a diver, hits his head, and, and then it causes just the rest of the movie to play out yeah. as a comeback story. Uh, I did want to show this, because I, then I wanted you to comment a little bit about the movie yeah, and how God's used that particular moment in your life. Mm -hmm. Let's watch this video together. Beginning the second round is Garrett Delaney doing a reverse three and a half in the tuck position. Degree of difficulty, 3.3. Currently at 81 points, Garrett's in the lead by six. Let's see if he can follow up his phenomenal first dive with something just as good and stay ahead of the competition. Honestly, this is the whole reason we brought you here. Just Absolutely. So we can show I that. love that reaction every single time. Yeah. <laughs> so when you hit your head, you black out. No. 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 So um, obviously a head injury like that is going to cause a lot of residual damage. And so something I didn't tell people for a long time is that injury caused a lot of memory issues with me. So I actually don't remember the incident at all. Um, it was kind of like I woke up at age 12, didn't realize it had happened, didn't even realize what was going on, but I actually hit my head and from the stories my teammates who were there and my coaches told me, um, I was just there screaming in the water and I didn't know why and my coach ran over and got in the pool and held my head together before paramedics could get there because you're in chlorine water, you don't want chlorine water going in, I'm not, I'm not like a bio person, I'm not a scientist. My wife is way better at this, she went to school for this, but I assume if you get chlorine in your head, you're gonna die. So he got in to like hold my head together before they could take me to the hospital and they put 33 staples into my head and then a tube about this long into my head to drain out chlorine when I slept for the next week. And it was pretty nasty. But yet you're here. 
Yeah, yet I'm here. <laughs> and I'm still doing that dive, too. Yeah. So yeah. here's the amazing thing. Yeah. This is really cool. So tell them, if you would, what you were doing, the particular dive, and then why that is uh, so symbolic in your testimony, how that particular dive uh, means something special to you because it's also uh, relevant in another moment in your life. Yeah. So. That dive is a dive that everyone in men's 10 meter does. It's a dive you pretty much need in the competition to stay competitive. And going into the Olympics to win a silver medal, we knew that dive was going to have to be in our list. And we had been doing it leading up to that point. And that was actually... What, what's it called? It's called a reverse three and a half tuck. So anyone, if you go to your pool, you do a gainer. You know what a gainer is? Yeah, we call it a gainer. You stand forward and you flip backwards. And... Um, that's the dive I hit my head on, and that's the dive that caused David and I to win an Olympic silver medal, too. So it's cool to see how God can use something that life throws at you, something horrible, something that could absolutely take you out for the rest of your life or end your life, and use it for good later on down the road. Yeah. Speaking of winning the Olympic medal. Yeah. Man, I know it's in here in the box that they yeah. get the medal to. I'd love, I'd love for you to just talk about, just for a second, uh, being a part of the Olympic team and mm -hmm. how you qualified. And then just take us through that moment when you actually not only represented your nation, which is a great honor, but then you, you took home the silver. Right. So for me, the hardest part of the whole Olympic experience was qualifying for the Olympics. Like I mentioned earlier, 2015 was a really hard year for me. Um, I was struggling with thoughts of will I make the Olympic team? Is this actually gonna happen? Because you build up for so long. You dive for 12 years, and then six dives at Olympic trials are what determine if you go, and then six dives at the Olympics are what determine if you medal. Um, and you're doing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dives. And the process was really tough. The process was hard. I struggled with a lot of depression because I didn't understand where my identity was. I thought I would be someone if I got to the Olympics. And it was at that time in February of 2015 that I found out I had a broken foot. And I was given two options by the doctors. You either get surgery and then try to come back for Olympic trials, which would be tough, or you keep diving on it and risk it completely breaking through before Olympic trials. Um, and I took option two because I'm pretty hard-headed, didn't want to get surgery, and it ended up working out. I would show up to the meets wearing a boot on crutches on a scooter where you don't have to use your other leg, would take it off and walk gently on the board, do my dives, put the boot back on, and go about my day. And I did that all the way through the Olympics. Um, I wasn't on crutches at the Olympics, but I was at a, in a boot at the World Championships before that, the World Cup before that, just in and out every other month to try to maintain the health that I had left. Um, so yeah, it was just a whole process getting there. And, but the second I qualified for the Olympics, it was kind of like this weight came off my shoulders. And it wasn't a weight of like, finally, I've made the Olympic team. Like, my dreams have come true. It was a weight of kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. I was crying in the video they showed it earlier. I wasn't crying necessarily because I was happy I made the Olympics. It was kind of myself mourning the way I was living leading up to that moment. It was me mourning all the days and hours and months I spent just stressing about this one thing. And one dive, before that dive, I wasn't an Olympian. After that dive, I was an Olympian, but I was still the same person. I thought it'd be this big magical moment where my life would change and everything would change, but I was literally the same human that just came up out of the water. And it was a realization for me. God really revealed himself and his identity for me in that moment. It was like, hey, you're Steele Johnson, you're an Olympian now, but that doesn't mean a thing. It's all about the fact that I sent my son to die for you, not because you're gonna be an Olympian, but because I care about you and I love you. And no matter what you do, what you say, it's not gonna make me love you any less. Yeah, that's such a powerful testimony, isn't it? That you, um, you literally have one of the most coveted you know, awards in the world. And, and yesterday you were allowing some of the students to, to be able to hold, you know, yeah. this coveted medal that, mm -hmm. as, as NCAA athletes that they ascribe for, you know, yeah. they want. But yet at the same time, you, you cast all those crowns at the foot of God, knowing that what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, right. but to have forfeited his soul. Yeah. And, and that's why we, we love your testimony and that you, you're just such a, a person of perseverance. And uh, you guys want to see the medal? You guys want to see the medal? That's a pretty cool one. Will you show it to us? Yeah, man. They're very careful. I've, I've noticed, like, uh, he didn't want anybody to... 
There it is. A giant piece of metal. <laughs> so they're all different, right? Uh, every nation that, that, that represents or hosts the, the, uh, the medal uh, ceremonies, the, the Olympics has a different one. So yeah. they all look, tell us a little bit about yeah, so this medal, it's silver and it's really heavy, and that's really all I know about it. I, I don't, like I was showing it to the swimmers yesterday and the swimmers and divers, and they knew more facts about the Olympic medal than I did. I have no idea like what it weighs. I just know it's heavy and it's metal and it sits in a box for months at a time. <laughs> Tell us about the box. What's, what's crazy? The box is cool because the boxes are designed by people from that nation. A lot of people... They're, they're more like protective over the box because they don't want the box to break because then you have to like just leave it out on the counter and it'll get all scuffed up. But the box, this one's made from like Brazilian leather. It's really nice. Wow. And I just try to, yeah, Brazilian leather, yeah. Um. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's hand scribed. It, so it's, that's crazy. And so it, every, every nation makes a different box. They make a different yeah. metal. And yep. It's all different designs. I think it's done by the, oh. Well, my box was unique, and now it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, bro. Um, well, if anyone has a new box, I can put this in. That'd be great. <laughs> for what it's worth, we, we beat Liberty. I mean, we beat Baylor, so I don't know if that, true. that helps. So we can, we can give you some... This is not, this is not the real box. Y'all want to see the real no. box? Of course this is yeah. not the real box. Can we show you the real box? <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> This is the real box. Yeah, really so this cool. is the real box. It's actually made of Brazilian wood. There you go. Amazing. I guess wood's not as exciting as leather, but we'll take it. <laughs> but yeah, and almost everyone has broken theirs. I have met all the other athletes that got their medals and broke their boxes within the first couple days. Yeah. And mine's somehow still intact. So if I let you hold it, feel free to spike it. It's just a box. That's right. We wanted to show that to you because uh, after Combo's done, if you wanted to come and uh, just say hello and, and meet yeah. him, uh, he'd, he'd love to meet you. We'll be up on the side. And then if, he's going to let you, if you want to take a picture with the medal, yeah. he'll let you do that. But you can't touch the box. That's, that's <laughs> one thing. All right. Uh, hey, uh, real quick. Uh, yesterday, you spent some time with, with our great coaches and with the swim and dive team at the natatorium, uh, the brand new natatorium, by the way, which is just a, a, an incredible facility. Absolutely amazing. I've been in a lot of natatoriums across the world, not just the U.S., and this one was absolutely a pleasure to dive in. It's brand new. There's so many little details put into it. I was talking with the coach earlier. Um, just the fact that the swimming pool and diving well are separated. You might not know that that's a huge deal, but diving wells are hot, typically, because we do one dive and wait five minutes in the hot tub before our next dive, not like swimmers who are constantly going. So if the pool is cold, we're cold, and we're not happy. <laughs> uh, we have a little video from yesterday. Let's, yeah. let's show that real quick. know what it's like to be an NCAA athlete all the way through. I've had all the highs, all the lows. Uh, so I guess the biggest thing I've learned from my collegiate experience especially is that if you keep what's important in the right place, the rest is going to fall in line. That's so good, man. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Everything, everything about you is cool, except the, we, a lot of us just can't get over the, the Speedo thing, man. That's just... Yeah. It's the uniform. I can't change it. <laughs> can't you just wear some jorts or something like that? Just See, I would, <laughs> but the second you grab your position, they split. So Speedo is actually a safer option, believe it or not. It would increase the audience, I think, uh, that the people would watch more if we knew that that was a possibility. I probably wouldn't be in the sport then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do a quick lightning round. We wanted to have some fun with this. You ready for this before we get out of here? I hope so. All right, ready? Pepsi or Coke? Um, oh, wow, I wasn't ready for this. What's Mountain Dew under? 
Pepsi. Pepsi? There we go. Mountain Dew Pepsi? Thank you very much. There you go. Well, we're a, we're a Coke campus, so uh, well, there goes your honorarium check. I'm All right, sorry. So, all right, uh, Drake or Kanye? Drake, are you kidding me? Yeah. That's not a real question. <laughs> Favorite holiday? Christmas, of course. Favorite animal? Uh, my Australian Labradoodle puppy. She's got one eye, and she's the cutest thing in the world. Do you ever dress her in a little Speedo? That's no, but she's <laughs> going to be a pirate for Halloween. <laughs> My wife and I obsess over our dog too much, if you can't tell. Favorite sport team? The Flames. Team USA. The Flames. Oh, I mean the Flames. The Flames! The Flames. Go Flames! Football game. Friday. McDonald's or Wendy's? McDonald's. Really? Oh, yeah. Important to know that we've been asking him about Coke and Pepsi, McDonald's and Wendy's, because he does not eat healthy at all. I do not. If you would have seen me in the green room, I had, what, was it quiche? Three quiches, a cinnamon roll, a bear claw, two lattes. I'm just... I'm a human, like, trash compactor when it comes to food. <laughs> All right, what is your favorite music, music genre? So, if anyone follows me on Twitter or Instagram, you probably already know this. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. But I'm a huge fan of metalcore, so... Oh, wow, that's a good amount of people. So I'm the person that you'll see in the center of the mosh pit or stage diving, and actually, my first metal show was at a band called For Today. You guys know them? Maddie Montgomery's been here to speak. Um, I know him pretty well. I'm friends with him. And I crowd surfed onto the stage. And typically yeah. they take you off. And he picked me up and threw me off the stage to crowd surf back out. So That's amazing. Go metal, baby. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting fact. Uh, we love Maddie. And we just confirmed he will be with us next semester again. So we can't nice. wait to have him back. Can I come back and watch him? Yeah, man. Come join <laughs> us that day. Uh, last question is the same question we ask all of our guests that come our way. Um, we just want to know, how specifically can we be praying for you? I know that you're uh, hoping to be a part of the next Olympic team. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, that's a big deal. But more than that, just we want to, when we see you on TV, uh, to be mindful to go, we're going after the Lord for our brother right. and his wife. Uh, how can we be praying for you? I think the biggest way y'all could be praying for me is just that I, I'm newly married. I got married over a year ago, and marriage is amazing, but it can be a real challenge because it really shows you a lot of your own selfishness and your own sin in your life that you didn't see before. Um, and I really have a goal of just being a great husband for my wife and always being there for her and being able to communicate well with her. And I'm not a great communicator. We've had some hard times, and she's really loved me well through it, so I just, I could use prayer just that. I can continue to try to be a good husband for her and love her well, um, love my puppy well and kids way down the line in the future. Yeah. I've asked our, our swim coach, Jake, brother, we love you. Uh, and, uh, and Tori, by the way, is uh, t today is actually her due date, by the way, everybody. So yeah. big favor that she'll come. Tori, come on up as well, if you don't mind. Uh, I want them to pray, all right, over our brother. And but let's, can, we, can we all do this together? Can we put our hands towards Steele Johnson? And, and we love you. We, we're, we're thankful that God is using you in great ways. Be salt and light as you go. And um, uh, Jake, if you would, just uh, let's pray. Father, first, let me on behalf of everyone say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to attend Liberty University. Thank you for the opportunity to hear from all the various speakers that we do. What an honor, what a blessing to hear from so many uh, great people, Christ followers. And Father, thank you specifically uh, for the visit today of Steele Johnson, and what a great testimony, uh, not just in the swimming and diving world where Steele is certainly an inspiration, but really worldwide and the example that he sets for traumatic brain injury survivors worldwide. What a great testimony uh, to face adversity. James, consider it pure joy when we face trials. And Steele certainly did that. And uh, we thank you for his perseverance as a test of his faith. And Father, we pray for Steele and his wife, newlyweds, one year. Uh, just pray for them as they go about the rest of their lives and, and challenges with school and, and elite level uh, Olympic training. Uh, just please be with them. Uh, be with the puppy as well uh, as they start a new life together. Father, please let them be an example for everyone in the swimming and diving world and how to do things the right way and how to do things uh, your way. Father, we thank you. Pastor Nasser. Amen. Hey, can we just one more time thank Steele Johnson for just being here with us today. I've asked him. 
I've asked him to be out in the front. If you want to come say hi and shake his hand and maybe even get to hold the medal, you're welcome to. Thanks again, everybody. You're dismissed. See you on Monday.